What's up and welcome to our podcast, Toast to Tea. We're two friends that love the world of celebrity and pop culture and talking about it with you. To join our world of celebrity, make sure to rate, like, and subscribe to our podcast. Now hit it. It's about that time. Wait, where's the Chris Cam? To say cheers to our world of celebrity. 1,000%. They're back together and it feels just right. Miss Mika, Mika, nice, nice to, to meet ya. Raise your glass. I'm Madison Hill. And I'm Courtney Revolution. Because it's our moment to toast to tea. Hello, hello, everybody. Courtney, how are we feeling? Madison Hill. I'm feeling <laughs> uh, delicious and dandy. I've been having a, a good week since the last time we spoke. I was going to say, spoke. delicious and nutritious. Girl, not so nutritious. I had some no. chicken parm last night um, at the dinner table and two oh my good God, old yum. martinis. <laughs> Wait, where'd you go get chicken parm? Um, I went to a place my friend had suggested, or I guess he was staying nearby, um, a place called Joey's, DTLA. Oh, my God. Oh, Joey. Okay, yes, yes, Yeah, yes. I, I yeah, went yeah, there yeah. last. I didn't realize I had been there before. I went there last year with um, somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they had, uh, they, they give you the glasses of champagne and that immediately, I yes. like, oh, I, I've been here before. Yes. Um, I the love, was good. I love Joey because they do do that. I originally yeah. went to the one in Seattle and then they do have them out here. But when I went to the one in Seattle, when my sister was up there and we walked mm-hmm. in and they're like, do you want a glass of champagne while you wait for your table? I was like, is this my new favorite restaurant? <laughs> Quite you possibly, said, well, yes. honestly. <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> thank you. I'm living for it. Also, Courtney, I just realized for people, well, if you're listening, you should know that Courtney and I are basically matching in our own color aesthetics. I just realized you're wearing like a pink tie-dye. I'm wearing a pink tie-dye, but mine's muted, which goes with my neutrals. Yours is bright, and I'm dying. We didn't even plan this, per usual. No. We still match. You guys, the lobes are forever linked. I was about to say that. Good job. (laughs) The lobes are forever linked. And we're almost to tour season, Courtney. Madison. We're getting closer. the Lord. Because the season's right before, like, I love you, Aries girlies down. Um, but y'all are, the energy, be, it'd be sucking the life out of me. Um, and so I'm ready for tour <laughs> season to get here so I can feel my powers returning, you know? Yes. I feel like we need it. We're ready. We're ready for the manifestations. The yes. first couple months of 2024, I know 2024 is still going to be our year, but didn't quite start how I think either of us planned. No, ma'am. But no, we're ma'am. keeping the po- we're keeping the positivity. <laughs> And, you know, it's going to be fine. And I feel like after tour season, it's all uphill from here. Madison, when I tell you, I feel like an evolution is going to happen for the revolution this tour season. I don't know what or in what way. Yes. I just feel like good things are are coming coming towards me. Towards both of us. No, absolutely. Well, you know, whenever the year was getting started, I remember seeing, like, all of the astrologists on my TikTok feed because, spoiler alert, I am someone who gets the, like, if you don't save this audio, you're going to have a bad day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So my save videos on TikTok are, like, all of these audios, like, say this, save this so you can be a millionaire. I'm like, yes, save this so you can do this. Yes. Um, But anyway, all of the astrologies, astrology, astrologers that pop up, they were saying that until like June or July, we are Mm. in a really rare moon for Taurus or something. And it is like our luckiest season, which January, February, March have not been giving lucky, but that's okay because we got April, May and June to give lucky and it's the year of the dragon. So it's fine. (laughs) The dragon? Girl, let me yeah. put on Rush Hour real quick, girl. Uh, the year no. the dragon. Go turn on some Cisco. Girl, Cisco had the album called Year of the Dragon, didn't he? Yes, I think so. Was that the name of his album? Shout, Cisco, come on the podcast. We want to talk about Thong Song. Exactly. In the Someone Year of the Dragon. Cisco. Tell him. <laughs> dragon. Tell him. Which, Courtney, speaking of albums, <laughs> music, your fave topic, Ooh. Beyonce's new album, Tanner Rizal <laughs> on the album, Buckle Madison. Bunny. <laughs> Madison, when I tell you, that was the very first thing that I saw this morning. I, I woke up, I opened up Twitter, and it was Tanner Adele is on Beyonce's new album. And I said, you know what? I don't always want to be right. But <laughs> when I know, I be knowing. Because haven't I not been screaming about Tanner Adele like a crazy person the past couple weeks? No, you've literally been <laughs> screaming. I've seen Buckle Bunny all over your Instagram. Also a bop. You were correct. It's good, right? You are correct. You are 1 million percent correct. You also know exactly my genre. Whenever I need a good to shake, I know who to call. Buckle Bunny is that. Ooh. And you really, I feel like you called Tanner Adele before anyone. I don't even think anyone was saying Tanner Adele. 
And you knew. Listen, I'm very excited. I'm very proud of her. I'm going to see her live this year for the first time um, at Hangout Fest. So I'm going to, I'm ready to like cry the second the intro to Buckle Bunny plays. Um, but now I don't know if I'm going to be able to get front row, Madison, because you know, I know now she's about to Beyonce. blow up. I know. I know. Y'all, what am I going to do? Tanner Adele, if you're listening, I just want to be able to be close enough to get good video footage to capture the memory of going off to Buckle Bunny because that's a hit y'all stream that. Also, Tanner Adele, if you're listening, he has been your biggest fan prior to Beyonce. So I'm just saying if anyone deserves VIP treatment, I do feel like it's Courtney. I'm you know just, Tanner Adele, my girl. I'm, I'm biased, obviously, but like, come on. <laughs> also, you called that Dolly Parton was going to appear on there. And yeah. she, her name's on the track list. Yeah. I love that. Listen, mm-hmm. I feel like if you're going to make an album that is an ode to country or country aesthetic, etc. Dolly Parton has to be involved in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that Beyonce had uh, had her on there. I know that people are feeling like, there are some people that are feeling like Beyonce is almost like parodying country, which I definitely don't feel that way. But I'm, I feel like she's honoring it by having yeah. Dolly Parton be part of it. Because um, Willie that, that Nelson's on there too. Yeah, girl, Post Malone's on there. My, yeah, Miley so, Cyrus is on there. So I'm just like parroting, huh? Yeah, you know, yeah like, I you feel, know, people crazy. Yes, but people just love to complain about literally anything. You know what I mean? She could have had every single country artist that's in the top 10 country charts on that album, and it still wouldn't have been enough. Reba you know? Kane Brown. She could yeah. have had all the girlies on there. And it's still, people are going to criticize. I am um, upset that uh, Miss Swift isn't on there, but you know what? I will recover. It's no fine. Lady Gaga? No I Lady Gaga? I was really, really looking forward to it. I really thought I'd manifested that. Um, the deluxe I thought girl. The, I thought the PR girls were listening to me to say, hey, this would really shut up all those comparisons. Courtney and I wouldn't have to fight for our lives online anymore. Um, but they did not listen. So that's upsetting. <sighs> Not but this okay. time, Madison. I, I want it to. I want that collab as much as um a Taylor Nikki collab. So I, I get that. We need it yes. for the streets. Mm. We need it. You know what would be cool if Taylor, even though I don't know if she would ever do this, but if she did an album like Ed Sheeran did where it was like all collabs with just icon after icon after icon. I loved when he did that. I want her to do that. that would just be for fun. Just for fun. A she doesn't tape. need. <laughs> yes, she doesn't, obviously, we, she doesn't need an album that's always full of, like, these emotional stories, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, she can, she's at the point that if she wants to put out an album for shits and gigs, she could. And I yeah, would be honestly, here for it. I would be streaming Mad- and listening. You're on to something, Madison. I'm just saying, that sounds Taylor. Like a, that sounds like a moneymaker. Uh, a big moneymaker. And people will say, oh, it's a cash grab. So what? Grab my cash. Take it. For a collab album? Are you kidding me? Mm. Where Taylor Swift has all of her friends on it? Absolutely. Take you know money. those uh, those Taylor Swift parties would go crazy if that kind of album came out. That's there what I'm be saying. There so, so much reason to celebrate. <laughs> How fun. Also, like, all of the Taylor Swift, like, DJs, all of mm. the events, the pop-ups. Like, I just think it would be iconic. They're doing that at Hangout Fest. That wasn't a thing last year. They're doing, like, a Taylor Swift, like... Perf- pop up not thing? she's gonna be there, but it's like a Taylor right. Swift party pop up thing at Hangout. Yes, Fest. and I was like, okay, that's new. I'm ready to turn. I'm gonna turn up, girl. Ah. Yes, especially with that new album being out. Ah. That's Hopefully what I'm Taylor saying. got one booty shaker on there because it's giving sad. So, like, but girl, even if she doesn't, <laughs> even if she doesn't, I feel like a DJ's job is to turn the sad into a booty shaker. Yeah, yeah so they should yeah. be able to do that because Kansas City, obviously, they are. <laughs> Big T Swift fans these days. And now I feel like so many bars will do like Taylor Swift tonight mm. or and they'll have a DJ that literally remixes all of the songs into like fun party songs, booty shaking songs. And it is so that. fun. It is so fun. So mm. let's say that's what's going to happen at Hangout Fest. And we're manifesting still a clap. We're not losing faith. We're not losing I faith. I need it. I need yes. it. We need it. We need it. Courtney, just like we need to watch House of Villain season two. <laughs> Madison. Because we went to the party for season one. We so went now to the party we gotta go to the party one. for season two. I still talk about that party for season one. It was one. so um, fun. You guys, whenever, um, we had a time. My favorite part of the evening, Madison, and I always, always, always tell this part um, when I tell the story was, of course, meeting Tiffany Pollard. And that was a beautiful moment. <laughs> but the best part of it 
was you were so on point with the light. I always tell people, I'm like, <laughs> she's like, yeah, you can take the mission. I go, Madison, light, light. <laughs> And I go, Madison's got, had that damn light, y'all. And you I, guys, when the I came ready. out, I look so good. Madison, you were so. Do you understand that could it could have been a smudge lens? I there's know. so many things that could have gone wrong in that moment. And that picture in general is just like one of my favorite pictures of myself. Um, so thank you for capturing. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for the memories. No, you don't know how like my palms immediately started sweating when I was like, this is gonna be on me. Okay, Cardi meeting his literal icon hero for a photo is this photo's on me okay <laughs> i'm such a good photo. shaking shaking in my boots but it's it ended up okay it ended up okay my other favorite moment of that night was when we helped abby lee miller get a steak skewer because she couldn't reach i kind of forgot about that <laughs> oh my god i didn't i was like <gasps> abby lee miller she's got and we like picked up like the whole serving tray to like serve her her steak skewer because she was sitting there and like nobody was helping her and we we're like girl do you want a little snack and she's like yeah the steak we we're like oh, i'm so sorry we should have known we should have known living in la you will always have strange experiences like that but they are always beautiful when you look back on them after the fact truly for sure. truly we what had do a you great think time of the cast madison well, Teresa Judice is part of season two, which you know I'm a Real Housewives of New Jersey girl. So I will be interested to see how she does on another reality show, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, especially the trailer for the new season of New Jersey is out, and there's like allegedly drama with her finances, with her new husband, which kind of was, I was like, ooh, is that why she's doing House of Villains? Like, ooh. I just want to see her in a new environment. I think it'll be really ooh. interesting. Sheesh. Well, mm-hmm. I can tell y'all that the cast is a good cast, but they should have and almost had me. Which would have been even more iconic because I would have wanted Teresa to flip a table <laughs> and you witness it. No, um, I, I, I think that I don't know how I would have fared in that mix. I also realize that I'm always usually like the youngest person now at this point yeah. on reality TV, depending on like the kind of people that they cast. So I wonder like how I would have, like how does my personality fit in with like Candy Muse from Drag Race, Teresa from Real Housewives of New Jersey, Camilla from uh, Bad Girls Club. Like I'm like a fan of all of these people. So to have to be in a house with them and have to compete against them to be like the ultimate super villain is a wild thought. Um, definitely glad that I considered it. Um, yeah. But I, it just wasn't like the right time for me right now. Maybe mm-hmm. season three. We'll see. Call. Um, ring the phone. Yeah. They, they come in, they, listen, there are some shows that can't ring my line. I'm like, don't mm-hmm. call me. It's never going to happen. Um, House of Villains, I definitely would not shut the door on. Because it looks yeah. like fun. And it's here. Like it films here. Um, so right, which is home. so nice. You don't have to travel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we when they love... throw me out, I can just come home. <laughs> <laughs> I also love being the youngest in the room. Like, yeah. the fact that we can still say that, I'm kind of living for it. I like the idea of, like, we've been around We've been around to, like, watch reality TV for so long. And it's like, mm-hmm. how often do we get good, new, iconic supervillains? And I think that the idea of like all of these icons that have been on my TV screen forever and I'm coming in there like hey okay pack your <laughs> shit up cuz now I'm here <laughs> y'all can go to the retirement home like that like that like the idea of me saying that is hilarious cuz I'm packing them hoes up safari in there Nicki Minaj ex husband is in there safari ass is going home first <laughs> Um, so, and Madison, I will say this, and I think I'm allowed to say this. I was asked, I did have a a meeting with them and I, I was asked like who my favorite, um, villain was of all Mm -hmm. time. And I, my response was Nicki Minaj. And I said, because I feel like every good super villain is just a misunderstood anti-hero. And I said, that's the definition of Nicki Minaj and the silence on that. Yeah. Because you killed that answer. But it was the fact that they knew that once I said that, it would be great to have me in a place with her ex-husband. Yeah. And I said, Nora, babes. I didn't know that Safari was there. I didn't know the case right. at all that they were going to be there. But it's so interesting how I would have almost 
set myself up for that and that was my response to that question Weird, but think about right? how happy nikki would have been she would have been liking that instagram post all over they're already again. out of the house i would have had a vip <laughs> ticket to gag city right now <laughs> <laughs> okay next time next time next time next time next time, next time. Next okay time. courtney let's go ahead and get into the tea let's even do it, i feel girly. like we've already been into the tea Ooh. we're hydrating are you smoothieing today Oh, girl, that's coffee. I drank most of this. Oh, I was like, oh, my God. Wow, okay. Well, Karen, my little cold phone. You really are doing nutrition. Wow. <laughs> girl, I, I didn't even go to the gym today. I said it's the podcast. I could wake up. No, uh, no, no. I have been going on walks, so that's good. Good. We're t- walks are trying great. To, trying to get my health era, you know what I mean? We're working on it. The vitamin D from the sun. Yes, and I'm taking a vi- actual literal vitamin. <laughs> I don't know why I just pointed to my mouth. Like, you know what I mean? I'm taking a vitamin. Okay. Um. Anyway. You guys, we're kicking things off. Still talking a little bit about music, a little about a little bit about reality. So it's a perfect segue. Um, Miss Rihanna giving Kyle Richards advice. And <laughs> I know this sounds random, but for those of you who don't know, Rihanna A is a Bravo girly. During her first pregnancy, she posted all the time about watching Housewives, Vanderpump. Like she is very in the know about the Bravo universe. And also, she met Kyle Richards a while ago and her daughters at Kimasabi. Mm-hmm. Remember, Kyle Richards is on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Now, after seeing a light on Kyle, deciding to stop by knowing that they would open the store for her, Kyle knew Rihanna. She was a huge fan. That's kind of how they got together. It was amazing. Um, Kyle actually revealed that Rihanna gave her all kinds of advice on her marriage, the women on the show, and how she's handling things, which I love because that's how you know Rihanna is up to date. Uh, this is what Rihanna allegedly told Kyle. Quote, I haven't told anybody this. This is what's Ky- what Kyle is saying. But she said something that was so amazing to me. And I was like, oh my God. She said, next time one of these women want to know all the details of the intimacies of your marriage, tell them, why do I need to give you the blueprint to my home when I'm already renovated? <laughs> and there it is, Madison. Mind yo business. Okay. I do love that. I love Rihanna, obviously. (laughs) Stan Rihanna. However, Miss Kyle Richards, here's where I have an issue. Mm -hmm. I would very gladly mind my business, but when you're commenting on Morgan Wade's Instagram this week saying, save a horse, ride a cowgirl, you're kind of opening yourself up for some attention and some questions. Madison, you heard that Nicki Minaj song? Just wanna get drunk tonight, and I'ma ride them, cowgirl, cowgirl. That's my number one most played song right now on my on repeat. I can't let that song go, and that's what that comment just reminded me of. Do you think, out of curiosity, that, or maybe we've talked about this in the past, but today, present day, do you think that Kyle Richards owes us an explanation about her relationship with Morgan? I feel like she gave, for me, she gave me enough hints on the reunion for me to mm. read between the lines. After okay. I watched the reunion of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and I think I even told you this, I was like, oh, Courtney, I am so team Kyle and Morgan are dating. Like, one million percent, you cannot convince me differently, whatever. But for maybe people who need a little bit more or people who don't feel comfortable coming to that, you know, conclusion or speculation... As I do feel like she owes people a little bit more because mm. she's doing this on social media. If she was quiet on social media, not feeding into the rumors, not very clearly not wanting to discuss it and not drawing attention to herself, then absolutely. Who are mm. we to keep poking the bear? But the fact that she's leaving these comments, I'm like, then you got to tell people what's going on. You can't want the attention, and then when it comes, be like, oh, JK, 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 JK. It's giving Hailey Bieber. You know what I mean? Let me say something shady, and then when people come at me, I'm going to say, oh, my mental health, I can't handle it. And I kind of feel like that's what Kyle's doing, but it's like, let me leave a flirty comment, but then when you all want the tea, it's my life, leave me alone. I want privacy. Mm. And it's like, okay, but you can't have it both ways. Like, you got to pick which one it is. You know what I mean? You know what I'm thinking, Madison? I haven't watched just yet, and I probably will start today um, because the day that we're recording this, I don't have much work to do. Thank the Lord. Yeah. Um, but I do need to gain a bit more perspective, and I'm curious about Mauricio's perspective. Um, and to, in order to do that, I need to watch Buying Beverly Hills season two. Oh, my two. God. I need um, to watch so it, I too. I need to watch that and give my good Judy Brandon a call. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And if you're listening to this right now, Brandon on Buying Beverly Hills Season 2 and 1, he has his own podcast called Basically Brandon, so go and check that out. Um, but I I'm, I want to see his point of view because we don't hear too much from him. Um, and now we realize that Housewives is Kyle's show and Buying Beverly mm-hmm. Hills is Mauricio's show. So I want to hear what he's got to say. Come on, yes. Mel. What's going on? I actually will say I'm very curious because I feel like Beverly Hills kind of painted Mauricio as the one who was distant in the marriage and not mm-hmm. really making the effort and too busy for Kyle. And she's... She's definitely painted as more the victim on Beverly Hills. You know, she talks about how there was something that he did that broke her trust in the marriage. She doesn't want to talk about what it is, but she's so emotional about it. Whereas buying Beverly Hills, I'm glad that it's actually out there because based on the clips I've seen, call me Kathy Hilton, I'm only watching the clips. Based on the clips I've seen, (laughs) it actually... No, I want to watch it. I want to watch it. I'm just giggling at myself because she's like oh I didn't she's literally at the reunion and Andy Cohen's like have you watched the season she's like oh I watched all the clips <laughs> like literally me. Oh, I watched all the clips on social this. media so I'm go- I'm going to watch it especially because my friend Izzy's boyfriend worked on the show so gotta support <gasps> him Ow. but um but I think that based on the clips I've been seeing Mauricio is not as much to blame as Beverly Hills was painting it out to be I feel like Honestly, after seeing what he's had to say so far, I feel for Mauricio. Mm. So it's a very, I'm a very, I'm in a torn, torn state, which is why I got to watch it in its entirety so I can really have an opinion on it. Um, But it's very interesting how each of their perspective shows almost paints them as like the sad one, the more, the one who's a little bit more of a victim of the broken marriage. Um, mm. And for Buying Beverly Hills, actually, you know, the cameras were rolling for Buying Beverly Hills when the news broke to the public. So I think that one will also be a little more, not real, but real. Um, on the scene. Say it, but real. Yeah, because. They were on the grounds. <laughs> yeah, Bravo picked back up to film them having a conversation with their daughters after Buying Beverly Hills already did that. So I feel like this one will be a little more raw, authentic. Because we're getting their like firsthand reactions to it all. Oh, sheesh. I don't know. I will say I this: um, there have been conversations online, and we did speak about this prior. But there have been conversations online about how people are wanting Christine Quinn to be on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Is that something that you would want? I'm going to be honest. Versus no. her just coming back to selling Sunset. Like, I think Christine <laughs> is not like housewives material in the Mm -hmm. sense of she's almost like too villainous to be on Beverly Hills. I agree. You know what I mean? Like I think her talents would be wasted on housewives because that's just not that kind of show. You know what? Yeah. I hurt some ladies feelings. Yeah. I mean the Beverly Hills franchise is just more, the drama is just, it's not as deep as Christine you know, would take it. Stay ass out, man. Yeah, I just feel like, you know what I mean? Now, Christine on more of an Atlanta, absolutely. Oh. She could hold her own. She could hold her own a little bit better. But Beverly Hills. Not young yeah. Kim Zolciak. <laughs> Bring her, literally. Courtney, I'm telling you, I am full. I'm just, I am rewatching Atlanta. I'm rewatching Atlanta. So I feel like that's the one that I'm like the most immersed in right now. Do you know what's going on with, with Simon and Portia? Have you reached? Oh my already? God! Yes, I've been. Of course, I've been reading all. Oh, of he that. locked her out the damn house, and she had the gunmen locked... come to a house. Yes. What? Oh my God! I'm. You guys, I'm just. You saw him put a cease and desist. Yes, that is the franchise I care the most about right now because I'm rewatching, <laughs> and whatever one I'm rewatching is the one that I'm fully clocked in on the drama. And yeah, Portia's husband is. I mean, poor girl. Wild. Another divorce, man. You know what I mean? Another bad one too. Yeah. Cordell, and then this. I'm still in the Cordell era. We're actually we're divorced from Cordell, but and now thank the Lord, no shade. Yeah. I don't think Cordell was into Portia at all, and I'll leave it at that. And if you um, haven't watched, go back and watch, and you'll know what we mean by saying he's not into Portia. <laughs> watch that. Pillow the groundwork talk is laid. And see, and see the tea that was spilled. Rewatch mm-hmm. that Pillow Talk episode and see the tea that was spilled. Yes. And then if you're Poor confused, Montel. go watch the Law & Order episode about the down low. And then you'll really understand where we're going. Not the Law & Order episode. You know, I'm telling you, Law & Order SVU. Oh, my God. I see. 
We're educating silly. the masses. Got educating it. the masses. You know I love Law and Order SVU. It's one of my guilty pleasure shows. We all sorry. have them, I know that, and I support I know you. that took you out. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean, <laughs> I didn't mean to give you a giggle. <laughs> but in Atlanta, 12 out of 10. 12, 12 out of 10 on that season, honestly. Okay. I think it's Period. season 7, season 6. I miss Seasons. season 8. No, no. I'm in season 7 right now. So season 6. Season seven. Oh, the season 6 in, reunion is really just a sleigh. A s- absolute sleigh. Can't can't say enough good things. I love that you're rewatching Atlanta, Madison. Oh my god. Uh, well, rewatch also rewatching things as an ad- when you're like a full adult because obviously when Atlanta started, I was still younger. You know what I mean? But yeah, rewatching yeah. things as a full adult and catching things that you didn't catch when you watched it in real time on television, highly recommend you guys. It's just like when Same. you rewatch Laguna Beach and you're like, oh, they're underage drinking, and I. Had no idea when I was watching that in middle school. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, they're drinking out of a water bottle and a Coke can. Yeah, because they're doing shots. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, I didn't catch that. And just like some of the innuendos and the insults went a little over my head. And now I'm like, oh, my God. These women ruthless. are ruthless. That's why I think Christine would do a little bit better on there. Beverly Hills, they, would, they wouldn't they yeah. would be able to handle her. Absolutely. They would actually be very upset. Yeah, no. She would probably no like way. take the spotlight away from a lot of them, unfortunately. Mm. From Kyle. <clears throat> from Kyle. There, I said it. There, I said it. There, I said it. Even though I love oh, Rihanna, God. I love that Rihanna stands Kyle. But I'm just me saying, too. Rihanna, out of all the ghouls, she's not uh, doing it for me right now. Just saying. <sighs> I want to um, go to Spurn and see Rihanna. Yeah, same. Uh, ugh, I love Rihanna. Please. Yeah. We're, we'll, let's just join the conversation of release the album. Just saying. Um, and I know she hates when people say that, but I had to say it. It needed to be said I one need more time. It, uh... it needed to be said. But, Courtney, let's talk a little bit more about Christine Quinn because okay. we knew the drama with her was not over, but I think it's gotten even worse than what we could have predicted last week. It's insane now. It's gotten messier. So, you guys, Christine Quinn from Selling Sunset. Remember last week's episode, we filled you in on how her husband was arrested in his bathrobe, bare feet, for assault with a deadly weapon. Trigger warning. Mm -hmm. We are talking about domestic violence. Um, And Christine claimed that he threw a trash bag filled with a glass bottle at her. It missed her. It hit her son. He went to the hospital. She got a seven-day temporary restraining order. And now, you guys, all hell has broken loose. The situation has gotten even messier. So first up this week, Courtney, Christine's husband, Christian, filed a temporary restraining order against her. And he claims that all of Christine's stories are a lie. He says that the day he was arrested, he became upset after he found that their dogs peed on some of his important belongings. He said it's their two dogs that Christine refuses to train, and I guess the dogs go to the bathroom all throughout that multi-million dollar home. Crazy. Okay. He said when he found that the dog peed on his stuff, out of anger, he threw a trash bag filled with rags at the wall. Okay. He claims at that point, Christine scooped up their son, locked herself in a room, called the police, and fed them the story about the glass bottle. My question is, the Mm -hmm. baby was hit with the bag, right? With the glass bottle. So, Christine is saying that the baby was hit. Christian is saying the baby was not hit and that he threw a trash bag full of rags at the wall. And Mm. it didn't hit anyone. So, those are the two stories that we're getting. Might be an unimportant point, but is there a marking on the baby? So, no one has released if there was a marking on the baby. All we know is that paramedics arrived on the scene and that the baby and Christine were transported to the hospital. Oh, okay. So, if I, which granted in any instance where where there are these accusations, where there's these accusations, they're going to check them out. But the fact that they checked him out and then they went to the hospital. I'm kind of like, mm. that's suspicious to me, right? That's something that I'm not just completely writing off. Mm-hmm. Okay. He is claiming that Christine is making up these stories, making up these lies to get an upper hand in a possible divorce and a custody case. So that's why he wants protection against her. 
which mm-hmm. a judge denied the his TRO <laughs> pending a hearing, obviously. Okay. Now, since that, Christine filed her own temporary restraining order against him. Because remember that one that the police gave her only lasted seven days. Mm -hmm. And she said that prior to his arrest, so prior to that Tuesday, she had confronted him about their money issues. Which, remember, we said, do you think there's money issues? Because why isn't this man posting his bail right away if he's a millionaire? Because he was involved in the crypto stuff, right? Yep. He was involved in crypto. And then, remember, I said his bail was $30,000 and he hadn't posted it right away. That it stuck took out a to me. Days. That's a red flag because you're, That's supposed a red to be, flag. you're supposed to be Oprah rich to our understanding yeah. and the audience. Yes. I mean, you are You're supposed to be in and out. Guy. That's pennies. Yeah, exactly. That should be like, <laughs> literally, someone on my live was like, 10% of that's $3,000. Like, I could pay that. Like, what is this man doing? And I was like, oh, oh yeah, wow. The fact that you did that math so fast. I couldn't have done that. Yeah, we would have been sitting here like. Yeah, Courtney and I would. <laughs> Courtney and I would still be in jail because we can't figure out what ten percent of thirty thousand is. <laughs> in tears, scratching percent. on the wall, the math. Scratching on the wall, trying again. to do the math. We would be struggling, and we don't remember any phone numbers because we wouldn't have our cell phones. We would just oh, be in God. trouble. In trouble. <laughs> um, but Christine claims that whenever she did confront him, he threw stuff at her. And so that day that he was arrested, she was, like, packing things up, trying to leave. The incident with the dogs happened. And that she maintains he did throw the bag with a glass bottle. So she's sticking to her story. She's filing for this TRO. She's filing for, um, like, emergency physical, full physical custody of their child. Mm -hmm. Um, And she's maintaining her story. So I don't know. I'm – I – I mean, you know, this man's always giving me the ick. Yeah. You know? I wonder if in a case like this where she's, like, telling the police officers the story, like, do they go inside and, like, see if there is the trash bag with a glass bottle in it? Like, you know what I mean? Just, like, I don't know if if this counts as a situation that you need some evidence for, like, physical evidence. Right. Like, if I was an officer, I'd be like, okay, Christine, where the bag is at? Like yeah. if this happened, I mean, like show me what just just because I'm I want to I'm curious, like is it was it did the glass shatter in the bag? Right. Um when right. through it or like you know, where the rags at? If 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 it was yeah. just right, where the rags at? I mean, I imagine you can't arrest somebody for assault with a deadly weapon if you don't have evidence of the assault and the weapon. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that just feels crazy. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Um and again, this man why were you in a bathrobe at 2 p.m.? Why are you fighting in the bathrobe? Like, I just, the situation is messy. And I feel like whenever there is a lot of money involved, whenever there's high profile individuals involved, it's, ugh, it's just never good. And I think the real, like, really sad part of this whole situation is, is their son is witnessing and going through all of this and being, yeah. you know, pulled back. And this and will, this think, will always be in the news. Always, always. It's mm. always going to be in there. Your name's always going to be in there. You're always going to be in the articles. Like, it's just, it's insane. And, you know, these high-profile, rich, wealthy men, I mm. think it's... it's <sighs> they got power we couldn't even imagine accessing no. Madison, and that's the scary part. No. Even, the, but, you know, and, but Christine also has done some crazy things, too, in the past. You know what I mean? But I don't know why... To me, I'm always like, why would someone... This feels like a lot of details for somebody to make up. I agree. I don't think that you she's You know what lying. I mean? Like, I, I'm, no. I, I wish that when they came during the first call, there would have been a little bit more investigation in terms of like having some sort of concrete evidence that they could take to somebody and say, okay, well, mm-hmm. Christine said he threw the glass bottle in this bag. Here's the bag. Here's the glass bottle that shattered. Yeah, like what release happened. it to the public. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that way know? everyone knows that she's not a liar because I'm like, oh, just because this guy puts out one article to TMZ, now people are questioning Christine. Like, that sucks. Yeah. You know? So, mm. and obviously we love... I know Christine's a controversial figure on Selling Sunset, but you can't deny, like, she did make um, incredible television. Yeah. And, and this I is her real think, life. Yes. And I do think she lives for her child. I think she lives for her dogs. And I hope that the situation can come to a resolve because we obviously want her and her child safe. You know what I mean? That's what's most important, Madison. Mm-hmm. Got to make sure her and her baby are safe. Um, and if he is one being million percent abusive in that way, uh, we need you far away from that baby and that lady. Mm-hmm. Period. Yes. T. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. 
Okay, Courtney, we're going to move on to another big story this week. Obviously, we would not be doing our jobs having a toasted tea pod if we did not talk about Diddy. Madison. Take a deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Because if we thought he was in trouble a couple weeks ago, Courtney, when the feds come for you, when the feds come for you, (laughs) that shit is real. Okay. Rolled up on his home in Miami on boat. On boat. Via boat. So... Obviously, I'm sure you guys have seen by now that two of Diddy's properties, one in Beverly Hills, one in Miami, they were both raided by federal agents, Homeland Security. Again, like I said, his house in Miami, they literally came by boat. There were tons of cars and helicopters in Beverly Hills. It was insane. And they were raiding his homes because they are investigating him for sex trafficking, guns, and drugs. Now... This is an investigation. They are looking for evidence. He has not been arrested or charged with anything yet. That is why he is able to travel. Now, for people saying, huh, doesn't it look weird that you still go to the Caribbean even though you're being investigated? I don't disagree with you. But legally and technically, he is just being investigated. He has not been arrested or charged. I want to make sure we make that crystal clear. The reason why this investigation is happening is because y'all know he has several lawsuits against him. Cassie was the first one, and we've had several since. Um, It's not looking good, Courtney. Obviously, like we said, when the feds come to you, that's when you know you got a problem. His lawyers released a statement saying this is a witch hunt. You know, this is on no basis other than a few civil accusations. Um, Mm -hmm. But... In addition to this, in addition to his lawyer saying it's a witch witch hunt, I do think it's ironic that Diddy also this week reportedly sold all of his shares to Revolt to an anonymous buyer. So he is no longer involved, no longer an owner. Um, Again, he was seen leaving the country, which is optically not good whenever you're being investigated by the feds. Also, a ton of old videos of him and Justin Bieber are resurfacing where he's talking about how he's not going to disclose what activities they're doing, but it's a 15-year-old's dream. Um, Old Usher interviews are resurfacing where he talked Mm -hmm. about experiencing things and seeing things at Diddy's when he was 16. Mm -hmm. People are sharing their stories. Um, An old reporter from MTV talked about how he got a family member an internship with Diddy, and that internship ended when his family member wouldn't go home with him and spend the night. Mm -hmm. Um, Just... So much is coming out. Also, an interview, an interview, an article from TMZ about how Diddy tried to meet up with Kanye at the Rolling Loud Festival in LA. He wanted a face to face with him, and Kanye wouldn't even meet with him. And to me, I'm like, you know, if Kanye, and also public enemy number one, doesn't want to meet with you, like, damn, I, that's like crazy. That's crazy. It's just, it's gotten. I think this is arguably worse than I even thought it could ever get. You know? Madison. Here's the thing. (sighs) Have you ever seen the show Empire? Yes. I didn't finish it, but I've watched some of it. No one on earth finished that shit, Madison. (laughs) This, this with Diddy is like Empire. Like, mm-hmm. he was, like, this undercover mogul. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's this whole underworld. Lock his ass up. That Let me mm-hmm. say that first. Lock his ass up, number one. Number two, y'all, I look, I, I got to send the file to you, Madison. Or you probably already seen it, girl. The That 74 page with the with the case. The little rod Have you seen that? lawsuit. That's the, the yeah, little rod yes. one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. You got pictures of Cuba Gooding Jr. in these documents. Y'all asses are going to jail, bro. There, y'all, in the court documents, it's saying that this man, one of the producers on the Diddy's Love album, was in the studio, and Diddy and his son allegedly, even though there's photos in the report, girl, uh, allegedly shot one of the son's friends and like left him there to bleed out and then covered it up to the police. And then in the paperwork, they have the articles that came out from the shooting of the lie that Diddy forced them all to say to the police. Diddy's ass is cooked, Mm y'all. 
And that's just like one sixteenth of it all. Like yeah. the young Miami being the sex worker thing. Mm-hmm. Like like I said before, the Cuba Gooding Jr. on the boat, like, you know, allegedly like groping the producer. Did he shower yep. naked? We discussed in the past. Like mm-hmm. all of these things. And on top of that, you guys, the craziest part about it is Diddy thought he was so untouchable that he had the producer film and record just like everything. hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of everything. So mm-hmm. Diddy your ass is about to be so R. kelly It's not yep. even funny. Yep. I was going to say to- it's giving R. Kelly for sure, especially because it sounds like a lot of people knew that this stuff was going on. Mm. Like, I've seen so many people now speak out and be like, I always left Diddy's parties early because I knew what activities went down late at night I didn't want to be a part of. I knew to stay away from him. One of his former backup dancers is coming out saying that. Like, I knew not to get close. And it's giving R. Kelly in the sense of there were a ton of people on the outskirts of his circle who knew there were bad things happening, but no one ever spoke up. No one ever said anything because it was rumors, 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 rumors. I'm like, this is literally R. Kelly 2.0. It's giving Jeffrey Epstein because Jeffrey Epstein recorded everything, Mm -hmm. filmed everything. And I can't imagine being so powerful and rich to think that you are above the law in that way and that you treat people like that. Like, it is just... I, it's, I can't even conceive it. Like, my mind mm. can't even comprehend that because it's so mm. crazy. Madison, what happens to J-Lo? Because in the paperwork, it said that Diddy told the producer that not only did Diddy admit to shooting the club up and blaming it on Shine, that J-Lo was the one that was holding the gun and gave it to him so he could shoot up the club. Is J-Lo going to jail? Is she taking the six right into the clink? And Real Housewives in New Jersey. Clink, clink. Um, no. There's so I, many names in the paperwork. I'm like, y'all are going to release the tapes of the freak offs. Release the tapes and send them to jail. <laughs> you I know what's need it. crazy is that no one is even really focusing on the J Lo of it all because mm. everyone is like, all the headlines this week were Prince Harry named in the lawsuit. And I'm like, because no one can read and comprehend. He was named in the lawsuit because Lil Rod gave him as an example of, like, the high-profile individuals that Diddy had access to, saying, like, this is why nobody went against him, because he had access to all these high-profile people, like Prince Harry, as an example. That's Mm. the headlines, not the headline of, hello, (laughs) J-Lo is being accused of having a much bigger role in this than everyone was talking about years ago. Why is nobody talking about this? It's insane to me. How is she not being forced to say anything publicly? Like, I... It's wild. The videos of Justin Bieber? Creepy. Creepy. My thing is this, Madison. I have... I want to go ahead and put out a disclaimer before I say this, just to be clear. I don't have an issue with sex workers simply because I know sex workers and yeah, I have no. sex workers in my life that I care about. But it's so wild that people are focusing on the fact that Diddy was hiring escorts for himself and his associates, what have you. But it's not lost on it's not lost on me that in that paperwork it was also explicitly explaining that a lot of those escorts were underage. Like mm-hmm. there are there's there's like so many other sick things like at play outside of the drugs and the the sex work of it all. It's the fact that mm-hmm. Diddy was going out of his way to drug allegedly, underage. yeah, allegedly. underage girls. Like, mm-hmm. bro, how is he not in jail? Yeah, because there's you video know- footage of it. They got the screenshots in the paperwork, y'all. I'm gonna have to link the paperwork in this in this video on YouTube so that y'all can go and look at it yourself. There are screenshots, yo. You want to mm-hmm. see Cuba Gooding Jr. looking like a freak? Y'all go and look at that screenshot in that paperwork and see him have his arm around this man. Cuba Cuba Gooding, your sweaty ass need to be in a cell. Courtney, I, it's not funny, but just the way you say, do you want to go see? Uh, Ma- I was up movies? late last night, Madison. Scrolling, you know, and I was like, because it's like seventy something pages, y'all. I was like, no, it's oh, a oh, lot. Okay, okay, it's oh, it's okay. the biggest. And, I'm pretty sure his lawsuit is like the one with the <laughs> most physical evidence, which I think is funny because Diddy's lawyers are like, that evidence isn't true. We have evidence that you know discredits oh, all of that, brother. and I'm like. How? I'm like, this man literally, because Diddy was so self-righteous, 
This man recorded him allegedly, seemingly committing these crimes. And you're trying to say, oh, that video footage, we have stuff that's going to disprove it. How? Carisha from City Girls, you are going to jail. Stream sideways by JT. Because Carisha is going to jail. She's all up in there transporting drugs, having her cousin assault somebody in the back. Mm-hmm. Madison, well, lock all their asses up and Cuba that's the on thing. top, it's, period. Yeah, it's even like past, I think it's like the sex trafficking is one aspect of it, but also the allegations of covering things up, the weapons aspect, the drugs aspect, like th- there's just like all these allegations, there's multiple layers to it. I think a lot of people are focusing mm. on the sex trafficking aspect, but there's a lot of layers and a lot of things that have been whispered about, disp- whatever, that are now coming to light, and it's insane. What do you think of the people who say Justin Bieber was a victim, A, mm. that's my first question for you, and then what do you think of people, because I've been seeing this everywhere, what do you think about people who are saying Jay-Z is next for, like, the... Every- Everything I'm about to say is allegedly in speculation, yes. not confirmation, yes. just for clarity. These are just theories um, I'm seeing online that I have not asked you about personally because I wanted to mm-hmm. get your unedited raw thoughts on here. <laughs> you know I love it, Greer. Um, I know. I want to say this. I think that we have seen, even outside of rap, the cycle of abuse, right? So mm-hmm. we think of like Dan Schneider, Brian Peck, Drake Bell. Drake Bell got himself into his own what have you with a Mm -hmm. minor at one point who's to say it wasn't somebody to diddy diddy to usher usher to justin bieber Mm -hmm. not it's it's a cycle realistically it's a cycle i would not be surprised and look justin bieber today not saying that he is all the way to this particular level and it's probably because he has money and a wife but even present day, Justin Bieber is just like not all the way 100% mm-hmm. together. I would agree. You know, yeah. the same way Amanda Bynes certainly is not. She's mm-hmm. not even 50% together and she's just trying to get there. You know, yeah. and I've it's not lost on me that Justin Bieber is not all the way there. Um, mm-hmm. And I wonder why that is. Yeah. And it's not my story to tell. It's not even my story to speculate, but this is a discussion. Yeah. Um, but I, it, I would not be surprised if someday down the line it does come out that it was, mm-hmm. you know, Diddy, the puppet master of all of these uh, weird flavor camps. I think that's what they were mm-hmm. calling it. The, fl- the yes. flavor camps. Diddy, you are all nasty dog. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. We need a Wendy Williams th- this week bad. I know. Ugh. I do think that a bigger reckoning is going to happen. I feel like oh, Me yes. Too was focused on TV and film, and I think we're in the music one now. I, I think R. Think Kelly kind of started next. it. Yeah. And Meek Mill. Meek Mill, Jay-Z, and um, Trey Songs. I'm going to throw in there as well. Oh, my God. Um, for me. Oh, yeah. Uh. Trey Songs nasty. How Trey Songs always getting out of them cases, Madison Hill? His ass is going to jail. Him, uh. Jason Lee... Throw them on, they, girl, it's about to go down, girl. Jay Z, and I love Beyonce. You know, I love, no, we love, we don't love listen, her. Down. Don't listen, don't listen. We love her down. Jay-Z, we love her down. Jay Z, but Mick, wait until Nikki dropped this documentary. You better hope, girl. Mm-hmm. I know. Nikki gonna be the cherry on top when that documentary drop. Whenever it drop, we gonna think it's over. Oh, Once we're getting, we're getting go an jail. Instagram live immediately, and it is going to be one that you do not want to miss. I'm saying it now. Calling it out. Meek is, he's the dumbest one out of all of them. He's definitely going. He might not be next. He's like the rat. He's like the hyena from Lion King. He's he the might one scurry the- around in the dark, but the lights are about to come on. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get you. Yeah, exactly. Meek. Wow, this is true crime. True crime. You know who's working on a documentary about Diddy too? I don't know if you saw this this week. Uh, yeah, Lofty. my favorite. My favorite man uh, ever. His ex-girlfriend was a sex was worker ne- with the Diddy. I know. At the, at the Diddy, Diddy compound. Mm-hmm. He just filed for full custody of their child that they share together. Yep. I oh, was explaining 50? to somebody last night that everybody will go to jail before 50 Cent. 50 Cent is oh. probably the realest one out of all of them. 50 Cent is literally going to be sitting there being Kanye like, will be I last two standing. told you all that these people are trash. And I've been saying mm. it on my Instagram. And I went thought I was too. kidding. Yeah. Nikki too, Madden. Yeah. No, I know Fofty is going to be sitting pretty in his mansion, full custody with his children, 
and just getting the last laugh, honestly. Just spending that vitamin water money. Literally. (laughs) And just putting his documentary on repeat, knowing he brought the whole thing down. Like, I'm just, you know I stand him. I have for years because he does not hold back and I live for it. You know, I just, don't you just feel like 50 would hang out with us and we would just have a time? Like, I feel like we would just be laughing, gossiping, like. I think he'd get a kick out of us, to be honest. Oh, I think he would think we're hilarious. And I think he would want to be on the podcast at least once a month. Like, absolutely. I would love 50 Cent to come on the podcast. 50, come on the podcast and let's talk trash. Yes, please. Okay. Sorry, this was a serious, long topic of discussion. Yeah, this is a long. This though. is a longer episode, and hopefully, you all love it. Um, Courtney, Shawnee, Sean Mendez, working on his first uh, album in four years. What are we? Do thinking? I like Sean Mendez this year? I don't know. I haven't decided if I forgave him after Taylor Swift. I haven't decided. I don't I know. You know, if I'm Camila yet, released but... a new song this week too with that little music video. What Did you, you love it? Love it? Love it? Love it? Ooh. <laughs> you know, Did I said. You? I'm not, I, I got asked this question on my live. You know I'm not a Camila fan. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm like, you know, I love the convenience store bit. I feel like that's very trendy right now. Live for say, some good. Coded. Mm-hmm. Choreo, you know, I love, I will always comment on some good choreo, mm-hmm. you know. But we know I don't love her blonde. I've been saying that since day one. So for me, it just, but it wasn't made for me. Because I'm not one of her fans. You know what I mean? It just, that's, no, that's I'm trying to be not, I thought that was nice. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it wasn't made for me. Because yeah, I'm not just, one of her fans. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't made for me because I don't like her ass. So like, I'm, <laughs> d- oh, of course I wouldn't like her music. I don't like her. And her stupid no, ass I, hair. Like, <laughs> I just, but you know, like, it's hard for me if I'm not like a little bit personally invested in the artist. It's really hard for mm. me to be like, yes, playing this on repeat. Because I'm just like, <laughs> okay, this is, you know, it was fine. It was good. I, I'm you know just what? like. Did it make it to the like songs? It didn't make it to the like songs. So there you go. It was not. I'll say this. Camila has done worse. Um, mm-hmm. This was close to the worst <laughs> for her, in my opinion. <laughs> I think I'll say this because I will. I would be a hypocrite if I did not at least give her her fours out of tens for experimenting. Right. Because I do love when my music artists experiment and whatever, whatever, what have you. This experiment you know what it is? It doesn't feel authentic. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like you can't go from one era to the next and then be a completely different person aesthetically. It just feels so try hard to me. It feels like yeah. she's trying. Mm-hmm. Um, she she did the little Familia album thing mm-hmm. last it's album. Right? Yeah. That felt like her to mm-hmm. me. Like, I felt like, okay, well, she found her lane. Let's get Becky yeah. G, you know, the same couple song. Like, that felt like her. This feels like I want to be Charlie XEX. Mm-hmm. I want to be a hyper pop girl. And this is mm-hmm. what my interpretation I'm doing of now. That is. And, it, and it's not connecting for me, but maybe the rest of the album will have some hidden delights yeah. if she doesn't release the whole album before the album comes out. Yeah. Yes. So we'll see. So we'll, we'll see. Girl, we'll have to peek. And. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts about Sean Mendez? Are we excited for him or no? Um, you know, they ended on good terms. She did t- say that on Call Her Daddy. They're still friends, so I feel like it's fine to the Lord them for one. that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder I, I why they're still friends. I'll give him a stream. I will too, I'll because I loved his last album. I actually was I like, think re- I listened to it. I was looking at my like old Instagram highlights the other day from when our old job and I would have to go in at like 5 30 in the morning. <laughs> And I listened to uh, Isn't In My Blood, In My Blood, like, repeat, ah, like, in the morning, which I'm like, Madison, what kind of hype song was that? That was literally not a hype song. Um, but Lost in Japan, like, I did love oh, that was all of that kind of stuff. Album, was that? Was it not? Well, that's the last album I oh, listened Sean, to in its entirety. Oh, Sean, you're feeling starving. Yep. So, we were working there might be, corporate There might be time. one. <laughs> we were working corporate. That's how we know. <laughs> what? I forgot about that no, time in our life. starving, girl. <laughs> He said, I need to figure my life out. He said, I need to hang out in WeHo. I need to date a 50-year-old. I need to... Literally. There might have been one you know. in between, but if there was one in between, I don't remember it. And those, that's the album I remember. So, so I hope he puts something out. I feel like I do like his music when he 
is committed to it. So I'm inter- if anything, I'm more interested in Sean than Camila. Honestly, for Oof. me personally. I could, um, see, I haven't heard any previews of it. Well, I guess we got a little. Just based on even past music, I would say. Mm, yeah, fair, fair. Yeah. I'll give him, I'll give him the stream. Okay. If it's interesting, very... I'll continue. But if not, he goes in the Liam Payne bucket. Uh, oh, God. I didn't even listen to Liam Payne's new song. <laughs> I, know I used you to didn't. love Liam Payne before he offended the bi community and I had to toss him in the trash. That's how I knew whenever you compared him to Liam Payne. I was like, oof, okay. Oof, and that means done. he will not be getting a listen <laughs> in the slightest. <laughs> Okay, Courtney, last topic, and this is just because I am, you know, the biggest Tavis defender, um, possibly on the internet, and maybe not TikTok, I don't know, people on TikTok are crazy, but um, TMZ tried to come for Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey this week, Courtney, and not I'm not here for it. Yes. Well, first, actually, let me back up. Did you see the photos released of them in the Bahamas? Yeah. With his hand on her booty? Yes. Full cup. People was mad okay. about that? No, people aren't mad about that, but some people are saying that the paparazzi invaded their privacy and that they should give them time and blah, 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 blah. That's fair. I, I get that, but I'm also nosy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I want to see Travis's hand on Taylor's butt. So sorry. And, and they released them after they went seen. home. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, good. So glad we're on the same page about that. Believe me, Madison, Taylor been locked up in the dustiest of libraries for, the, <laughs> almost half, for more than half a decade. She want her ass grab to be out there for the world to see. She said, show me off. I writes these songs. I mm-hmm. makes this part and I stomps on this stage. Mm-hmm. You want to exactly. have a handful, big Travi? Take a handful. And if the cameras are clicking in the bushes, then so be it. We're still rich. I agree. I know. And people were saying he had a dad bod because it's off season. And I'm like, yeah. And it looks good. It looks good. Taylor's And Taylor's fan. rubbing on it. And you're not. Literally. How about that? <laughs> Tea. That's people why I love be hating Madison. <laughs> oh, people be hating. If you think that's hate, just wait. So this week they went to Dog Pound, which is in West Hollywood. You know the gym. Ooh, you know I know. Celebrities go there all the time. Okay. And TMZ put out an article that Taylor and Travis were making gym goers wait outside for two hours while they worked out privately. So People were saying they're entitled, they're selfish. Who do they think they are? Making paying customers wait outside for two hours. And you know what I love about gyms here in LA specifically is they will clap back if they feel like they need to. So Dog Pound Mm. released a statement saying, at Dog Pound, we value our members' experience and have never had anyone wait outside for two hours. The narrative running in the media does not accurately reflect the circumstances. We respect the privacy of our clients and have no other comments to share. I live. I'm like finally someone defending Taylor. I thought like, Dog Pound was a private gym anyway. Like you can't even be in there it, if you don't have a session with a trainer. So they Courtney, clearly shut it down because they had a private session. Thank you so much. I'm like hello. Also, that is the gym that Taylor's been going to for for years, what, decades. But Every always time when she's, she's, she's there, she's it's something negative. Because remember, there was the report that Taylor kicked Justin Bieber out of the yes. Dog Pound. Gym. I'm like y'all. Let's be realistic. Let's be realistic. That did not happen. Like No. No. And I'm also like, you think that these people paying for private gym sessions are waiting outside for two hours? No one exactly. in LA is waiting for a trainer outside for two hours. I know uh, I'm not. I, no. We're giving up. If you're not there and I've been waiting for 15 minutes, that's a sign from the universe. I don't need to exercise and I should go to brunch or lunch. Like, you know, my trainer be waiting on me. I said, sorry. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, he's like, it's so weird. The Uber is taking forever. Not the alarm, the Uber. What are you talking about? <laughs> Literally. So I'm just living. I thought that would be a good little cherry oh on top God. of this episode. Because I was like, not people trying to say Taylor and Travis are entitled when they're just utilizing the gym session they paid for it's literally a private gym y'all like it's not like they were they had shut down the 24 hour fitness and the whole literally. general public was outside like that's it's too different that's like, what they're making it sound schedule like a session it, yeah they they know what they're doing they no. know what they're doing well why do you think like tmz that. always does that though like why are because they because they, always... they want clicks and they know that they're going to get clicks off of diddy and taylor and travis right now yeah oh so diddy there's and, a new and of course article Nikki, every hour so. yeah of course obviously of course well, obviously okay courtney let's go ahead and wrap it up and put it. Actually, I'm going to let you say it because you say it better. <laughs> it's time to put it in the teapot. 
Remember, if there is something you want to put in the teapot, you can email us at toastedteapod at gmail.com or you can comment below on this YouTube video or you can send us a DM over on Instagram or TikTok. So please let us know what you want to put in the teapot. Get off your chest. It can be celebrity related or personal. I personally love the personal ones, so... And also, Madison, if you'd like, you can go to our podcast page linked in the description of the YouTube video specifically and leave us a voice message now. Oh, my God. Click that option for us. Yes. Leave us a voicemail. I want to hear. Yes. Yeah. And then we can talk to you. Right. That's cute, right? Yeah. I live for that. Oh, my God. I love that edition. For this week's Put It in the Teapot, I would love to remind people to ask for what you want. Um, And I've been so inspired and motivated, don't laugh, you guys, by this young lady named Tanner Riddell. Y'all, when I tell you I was scrolling on Twitter one night and this young lady said, as one of the only few black women in the country, I'd love if Beyonce sprinkled some magic on me and, you know, people dragged her for asking to be on Beyonce's album. And look, she's on Beyonce's album. And sometimes you don't realize that just by asking, you're opening a door for yourself. And it's great to wish. It's great to manifest. But sometimes instead of just turning the knob on the door, you have to take your big old boot and kick the door down. And I really respect people that are motivated and confident enough in their skills and their talents to simply have enough pride and deflate their own ego and ask for what they want. Um, I really want to encourage you to be confident in yourself and understand that closed mouths don't get fed. That's something with my, that's something my friend Lee off of the circle taught me. So yeah, I love that. Closed yeah. mouths don't get fed. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I really felt that. I said, I know that's right, Tanner Riddell. That's right. Honestly, I feel like same thing, like asking for help. I'm really bad yes. at asking for help. I'm really bad at it. Or just like verbali- verbalizing like, hey, I need the grace. Like I'm bad about that. So I feel mm. like you're right, Gourney. Ask for what you want. And if you need help, say it. You never know who's going to say like, I'll help you. Yeah. You Honestly, you never know. Okay, the thing that I want to put in the teapot this week is powerful men thinking that they are going to constantly get away with breaking the law. I feel like we are seeing this happen all the time. We got Dan Schneider, obviously, with the new Nickelodeon documentary. We have Brian Peck, which he was held to like a skosh of justice, barely any. I feel like not enough for me, especially with all these new people coming out and telling their stories. Diddy, even Christine Quinn's husband, you know what I mean? I feel like we let these powerful Powerful men get away with things for so long. They think they're above the law. They're narcissists. And I just am so happy, Courtney, that we are living in the generation that is finally saying enough is enough. You cannot behave this way. You cannot break the law. You cannot be gross and still get away with it. We're over it. We're done. We're not putting up with this anymore. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care who your friends are. We're over it, and the time is mother effing up. So I'm living for all of these powerful men being brought to justice. Obviously, we got to wait a bit, little bit longer for some official things, but I feel like at least publicly it's happening, and right now I will take that. I know that's right, girl. <laughs> powerful men, stop being gross. Stop being gross, honestly, because I think about that. I'm like, Courtney, Weak men when too. we're rich, stop being gross. When we're <laughs> yes, when we're rich, like we're gonna be so fun. I mean, I'm gonna be minding my business so bad. Think about how fun we are now, and we're we're on our way to being there. We're on our way to being rich. So I'm just saying, like I just can't imagine having. I can't imagine having that much money and breaking the law and being disgusting. Like when I have that much money, I will be traveling, minding my business, hanging out, sipping cocktails. We're gonna be having champagne all the time. Emphasis on sipping cocktails. Tequila for you, obviously. Period. Um, but it's just like, wow, what a waste of your money and resources to be breaking the law when you can literally be living your best life. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Like, why Can't not wait. live your best life? That's what I'm saying. Wow. Insane. I can't imagine. Couldn't be me. Won't be me. Nope. Never. No, thanks. Never that. Never. Girl. Never. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you enjoyed this episode of our Toast to Tea Pod. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you like this video. Make sure your notification bell is on. Also, make sure you are subscribing over on podcasts, over on podcasts on Spotify as well, and participating in the Spotify poll. Make sure you're following us on Instagram and TikTok at Toast to Tea Pod. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at I am Madison Hill and Madison Hill ninety three on Snapchat. Courtney. 
You can find me on Instagram at Courtney Revolution and on Snapchat, TikTok, and Twitter at Court Revolution. And I want to also mention that you can now listen to us on Amazon, iHeart, and CastBox and other places where your podcast can be listened to. But you got to check our podcast page link in the description. Yes. And leave us a voicemail so we can hear you. That. That'd be so yeah, fun. I can't wait. Okay. Yes. <laughs> leave us a voicemail. All right, y'all. We love you and we'll talk to y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Yeah.